Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the anatomy of the perineum. So what is perineum? This is the area that's gonna have the external genitalia. The perineal region is actually bounded anteriorly by the pubic bone, you have the ischial tuberosities, you have the ischial pubic ramus, you have the coccyx, and then you have your sacrotuberous ligament here and there so that will give you a diamond shaped structure if you try to separate that structure by uh, into two regions uh, two angles this is going to end up having one triangle which is what we call the urogenital triangle and another triangle which is we call the anal triangle now the anal triangle is easier, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the anal triangle first. So if you guys look at the anal triangle, what do you expect to see in the anal triangle? This is anal triangle. So anus is there. There should be the sphincter a muscle that is going to control the, um, the anus. Yeah, so we have the external anal sphincter there. All right. I have an artery and nerve and vein that supply those. Uh, um, uh, muscle fibers and that region so this is inferior part of the rectum so we call it inferior rectal nerve and vessels it's gonna be there I have a fat because this is a fatty area so we have the isquioanal pad of fat all right so I'm also remember you guys when we talked about the pudendal canal we said that it's in the lateral wall of the isquioanal fossa yeah, remember when we said that if we were to do pudendal nerve block, we have to put the finger and try to bulbate for the ischial spine, and then it means lateral to the uh, to the ischioanal fossa. It means here is my pudendal nerve. Yeah, exactly here before I get to the fossa. So of course the the beginning of the pudendals and pudendals i made a smiley face because there is nothing called pudendals this is just for me to make it easier to say pudendal nerve and internal pudendal artery and vein vessels so i would refer to that as pudendals and inferior rectals because it, this one refers to the uh, nerve and vessels yeah so whenever I say something from my own mind, I would add a smiley face to know that it's scientifically not correct. All right. Now, for the canal, it starts with the pudendal. And, um, and as we proceed, we're going to have the perineal and the inferior rectal. Yeah. So because, because the pudendal canal starts off at that region, and then I want to proceed to the perineal, and I need to proceed to the urogenital uh, uh, triangle, it means the pudendal is going to start here. You, so what would be the content of the anal triangle? It's very simple and easy. I have the anal canal. I have the external anal sphincter. I have the inferior rectal nerve and vessels. And I have the start of the pudendals because this is the canal. And once I get out of the canal, I will proceed as perineal. And then from there, I will get the three branches. We talked about them previously. All right. Now, what is there in the perineal region and the in the urogenital uh, uh, triangle? Before we talk about the urogenital triangle, I want you guys to understand how is the genitalia formed. The geni because we have some names, and I want to make sure everyone understands that. I want you always to remember that here we are talking about penis in male and vestibule in female, all right? Now, the, the penis and vestibule are, are formed of erect, erectile tissue. These erectile tissue are actually two in origin, or let's say two in nature, in nature, yeah. So I have cross and cross. They come together and they continue up as corpus cavernosus. So I have right and left cross of penis. So right and left crura, because crura is the uh, plural noun. Or I have right and left crura of vestibule. So basically, these are the crura of penis and vestibule. They will continue upward as corpus cavernosus. All right. Corpus means body. 
Okay, so we are going to end up as two bodies, a spongy body that is flexible to change in size and a cavernous body that has cavernous spaces that's going to be filled with blood during erection. So that's why we call them the cavernous bodies, two, and one spongy body. All right. So I have two corpus cavernosus, cavernosum, whatever. And I have one in the center, which is the bulb. And that bulb is going to continue as corpus spongiosus. Again, I have two crura, all right? I have right and left crura of vestibule and penis. They're going to continue as corpus cavernosus, the cavernous bodies. And I have in the center a bulb. And that bulb is bulb of penis or bulb of vestibule. And because in the female, the opening of the uh, the openings of the vestibule is going to split those this bulb into two, I will see it as two. But actually, it's one bulb, exactly like the male. All right. Now, the two crura are going to continue as the Corpus cavernosum, great. And these corpus cavernosums are going, both of them, to unite in the center. Now, the bulb is going to continue upward, all right, in female, as a body of clitoris. Actually, some of the books, they would write the bulbous spongiosis, but, but female, they do not have... Um, uh, spongiosis. We do not have corpus spongiosis. We only have corpus cavernosus. All right. We would call it body of clitoris. And from there we get the clitoris. Great. So the root of the genitalia, it's composed of two crura and one bulb. The crura are going to continue as the cavernosum. The bulb is going to continue as spongiosum. So I have here the bulb continues as corpus spongiosum. I have two crura. They continue as corpus cavernosum. All right. In the female, I have the same thing, but it's split it here into two. I don't have uh, corpus spongiosum. I have a body of clitoris and I have two crura and then they would continue up as um, corpus cavernosum in female. All right. Now, I have a muscle, all right? Remember, you guys, when we say corpus, we are talking about erectile tissue. It's the body of something. It's, a, it's an erectile body. So it, we refer to it as corpus. But when we talk about the muscle that connects the bulb to, the, of course, the perineal body here, and it goes to the spongiosum part of the penis, I call it bulbus spongiosus. So if I say bulbo spongiosus, it is a muscle that connects the bulb of the penis to the corpus spongiosum. It's actually a muscle that comes from the bulb to the, to the continuation of the bulb, all right? So this is the muscle. The name of the muscle is bulbus spongiosus. It's not corpus. Once I stop saying corpus, I'm talking about muscle. And the muscle is there in the, or on, in the early parts of the penis. It does not continue all the way up. It's only at the, at the, at the early parts of the, of the penis. All right? And if I say ischio cavernosus, it means this is a muscle coming from the ischial tuberosities. It goes all the way to the, to the corpus cavernosus. Now, I'm not saying corpus, so this is definitely a muscle. Ischio cavernosus is a muscle that covers, it covers the crura and the corpus cavernosum. And bulbus spongiosus is a muscle that covers the uh, bulb of the penis or vestibule and uh, uh, the corpus spongiosum in male because we don't have bulbus spongiosum in female. I hope you guys now understand the difference between the terminology in the perineal, in the urogenital triangle 
because I know it's, it's so much confusing, but I hope you now know the difference between the muscles and that covers the erectile tissue and the erectile tissue and, the, and what actually everything mean and what do we mean by the root of penis or vestibule? The roots is actually the two crura and the bulb, the bulb in the center and the two crura on either sides. And this is actually the erectile tissue itself, the tissue itself. All right, covered by the muscles. And of course, we have the transverse perineal muscles and that will be there in the superficial perineal pouch. We're going to talk about that in a while. Now, after understanding the erectile tissue and, um, and how things are formed and the terminologies, we need to understand one important concept, which is the sandwich that we have in the perineal region. The, the perineal region is actually looks like a sandwich. And that sandwich is... Um, it's it's made by membranes and fascia. Remember that when we had uh, in our bodies, uh, this was the uh, the abdomen, and we had the, the the fascia, and then we had the pelvis, and and of course in anything in the body we need to have deep fascia and superficial fascia except for the abdomen and face, because we have um, uh, our uh, abdominal uh, changes that happens and pregnancies and you know. Uh, distensions, we should not have deep fascia in the abdomen and even for the face because we have facial expressions, so we don't have, but we have them in ev every, everywhere else. Now, if you think about the pelvis, you have parietal and visceral layers, yeah? The visceral layers is what covers the viscera. It doesn't concern me now. I have the, what I want to talk about is the deep layer, which is the endopelvic fascia, which makes the roof of my sandwich, all right? So now I'm getting into the perineal region, which is below my pelvis, okay? So this is bounded superiorly by the endopelvic fascia, which is the deep fascia of the pelvis. And I have a membrane that separates the, the deep perineal pouch from the superficial perineal pouch, and I call it urogenital diaphragm, or I call it perineal membrane. Great. And I have a membrane outside, and that is coming from something outside. What would that be? Remember that in the abdomen, you guys, we had a superficial fascia, and that was having two layers. I had superficial fatty layer, the compass fascia, and I had deep membranous layer, the scarpus fascia. Remember that we said that the scarpus fascia, it goes all the way down, and it wraps around the genitalia, and it comes down, and it reflects back. This is actually here, we call it the collis fascia. So the down, the down fascia of my sandwich is going to be my collis fascia, which is coming actually from the deep membranous layer of the, uh, of the abdomen. And the superficial fascia was coming from the endopelvic fascia of the pelvis. And in the center is definitely going to be my perineal membrane. So this is how I will get the sandwich that makes my perineal region. In that sandwich, I have important structures deeply and I have important structures superficially. Okay, so if you guys look at this picture, you guys can see that. Where is my pointer? Yeah, you guys can see that this is my sandwich. I have the urogenital diaphragm or I have the perineal membrane. Okay, it's, it's separating the deep perineal pouch from the superficial perineal pouch. And I had the endopelvic fascia that makes the, my superior layer of my sandwich. And I have down the collis fascia that wraps around my genitalia coming from the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia of the abdomen. Okay? So again, remember we had the endopelvic fascia up. We have the urogenital diaphragm or I have the perineal membrane. All right, and I'm going to tell you from where this comes. And we had the collis fascia that comes from the abdomen, the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia of abdomen. Now, we need to proceed and see the content of each one of the pouches and how we can remember them in, them in the examinations. Now, I want you guys to remember that you guys know that what we have in the urogenital triangle is a uro part and genital part. 
it's nothing else than a uro part and genital part. Things related to the genital organs, penis and vestibule of the female, uro part, which is the urethra. Now, to know what is in the deep perineal pouch and the superficial perineal pouch, look at the superficial one first. The superficial perineal pouch is the structures that you can see. It's actually a general thing. I want you guys to have it, to envision it and, and, and think about it when you want to study. It's not something written in books, but this is how I, I used to remember the content of the superficial and deep perineal pouch. Think about the superficial thing as something that you can see. Can you guys see the genitalia? Yes, we can see them. So do you expect the root of the genitalia to be a superficial pouch or deep pouch? It's going to be superficial. What are the roots? You guys know them. The crura and the bulb. Yeah? Great. Now, these roots that we can see, yeah, I can see a penis and I can see vestibule in female. So these are contents of the superficial perineal pouch. It's very simple and easy. The roots are the, of the vestibule, the bulbs, and I have the crura. Great. What are the muscles that cover them? Remember the muscles? The bulbus spongiosus muscle and the SQ cavernosus muscle. Yeah. So bulbus spongiosus and SQ cavernosus. And I have one more, which is the transverse perineal muscle, because this is a perineal region and it needs support. So I have deep and I have superficial transverse perineal muscles. So in the superficial perineal pouch, which one of them would you expect to see? Of course, the superficial transverse perineal muscles. Yeah. So the superficial transverse perineal muscle is going to be the third muscle we have in the superficial perineal pouch. What else can we see? Can we see the vestibule of a female? Yes, we can see the vestibule. So the greater vestibular gland is a content of the superficial perineal pouch. Great. What else? The branches. I have branches of pudendal nerve and I have branches of pudendal artery. So remember our branches that we talked about them previously, the three branches of the pudendal nerve, the muscular, the posterior scrotal nerve, or the posterior uh, uh, nerve of the, uh, labia, the labial, yeah? And we have the, uh, uh, the, the, the nerve of the bulb itself, the dorsal and the deep. So these are actually contents of the superficial perineal pouch because they are going to my genitalia and my genitalia is already a superficial content. It is outside. It's, it's outside the, the, the membrane, the perineal membrane. It's outside. So everything that needs to get to them should be a superficial content. And even the arteries, the perineal artery, the artery of penis, it wants to reach my genitalia and my genitalia is already a content of the superficial pouch. Yeah, so now I'm not memorizing. I'm just understanding that anything related to the genitalia, which is a superficial thing, which is a thing that I can see, it's going to be a content of the superficial pouch. It's my inside perineal membrane, and they are all wrapped around by the colis fascia. Remember? All right, then what about the deep perineal pouch? It's a very, very easy thing. If the genital area is a deep pouch, then the uro area is going to be the deep pouch. What is my uro area? It's going to be my urethra. So my urethra is actually a deep perineal pouch. So I have the membranous urethra in male. This is a, 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 a something in deep, yeah, because the uro part is deep. I also have a gland that opens into the uro thing. So the bulb urethral gland is a deep perineal pouch. And here we like to be opposite to males always. So the male would come and say, if you have a gland in your superficial pouch, then my gland will be in the deep pouch. This is another way you can remember that the bulb urethral gland is a content of the deep perineal pouch. However, the, the greater vestibular gland is a content of the superficial pouch. But other than that, remember that this is a genital triangle. The genital part is the, my superficial because I can see the genitalia and the urethra or the uro part is gonna be my deep content. And that is gonna be bounded by the urogenital uh, here, the perineal membrane outside. And deeply, I have the endopelvic fascia. Yani, you guys, what you can see down to those muscles is the, the endopelvic fascia, very deep. And here, all the muscles are covered by 
the uh, perineal membrane. Anyway, uh, so what would be there? Anything related to the urethra. So uh, I have the external urethra sphincter and I have the deep transverse perineal muscles. Yeah. So everything related to the urethra. I have the urethra. I have the pudendals. Why I have the pudendals? Because, because they are running in here because they want to reach the superficial pouch. So they should run in the deep pouch to reach there. Remember when we said that the pudendals and the inferior rectals and the contents and the branches of perineal are in the SQ anal fossa, although they are going to the perineal region, because this is their pathway. They need to go through the SQ anal fossa and then they reach the, the, the original triangle. Here, it's the same concept. We are coming from a deep part. So we need to come all the way from the deep pouch to go all the way and supply the superficial contents. So the pudendals, internal pudendal artery and pudendal nerve and their branches are also there in the deep perineal pouch. And what are the muscles? Of course, you guys know that we have deep transverse perineal muscles. These are the ones here and there. It's cut here. And then they are all uh, uh, um, connected to the perineal body which is very important as uh, central tendon of my perineum because all the muscles uh, get an attached here. All the muscles we're talking about today are attached here, uh, except the SQ cavernosus because it comes from the ischial tuberosity. All right. And another thing, remember when I told you, I will tell you from where we have the perineal membrane. It's actually from these muscles. So the fascia of these muscles, the, the two muscles of the deep perineal pouch, will decide to form a fascia to cover themselves and form the, the, um, the perineal membrane. All right, guys, so I hope now um, um, it's easy for you to see what are the content of the superficial and the deep perineal pouches. Uh, with that, we are done. The last part we have is the lymphatics. Always remember that when we talked about the pelvis, we said that the internal pudendal uh, uh, artery is a branch of internal iliac. So if I have uh, um, um, lymphatic drainage from all the deep parts of the, the, uh, the perineal region, it's going to drain back. If it's coming from internal pudendal artery, if any bar part of that is actually supplied by internal pudendal artery, it means the lymph nodes are wrapping around those arteries and they are draining into the internal iliac lymph nodes. But if I have superficial structures, and these are actually uh, in the, related to the skin, the scrotum, the uh, skin of the genitalia, they are definitely going to drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Because remember, this is the same concept we have in the lower part of the anal canal, the cutaneous part, the lower part of the vagina, the scrotum, the labia, the, the skin, anything superficially, it needs to drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes first. And this is a very important exam question in the spread of lymphatics. You guys need to know that anything related to the skin at that area is going to drain first into the superficial inguinal nodes. And from there, it's going to go to the deep ones and from there to the aorta and all the way up until we reach the thoracic duct. And from the thoracic duct, if you want to know how things work in the lymphatic system and you don't know, you need to go ahead and watch again the overview of lymphatic system the general concept that I have in my channel, because we don't have time here to uh, explain that. And uh, with that, we are done with the perineum. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope, I hope it made your life easy. And see you in the next uh, concept or module. Thank you so much.